Welcome to season two, episode one of The Open Educator with Dr. Steve Diazio, the best place to be on a Tuesday morning. Today is an important episode. First, it is our inaugural episode of 2021, FU 2020, and an opportunity to set the stage on why we created this platform and what we can expect for season two. This platform was created out of direct need from you, USF students, and the challenges that you are facing. It is very possible you as a college students and young professionals, and I are probably suffering the most out of any cohort. And it's mind blowing. The emails that I've received, the messages, uh, I can tell there's a lot of suffering going on. And it's sad, disturbing, heartbreaking for me. Many of you might have lost your jobs, income, how you structure your day, your week, forced to maybe work, live, study, in bedrooms or different places, learning using some crazy crap hybrid learning approach that doesn't work. Uh, and on top of that, many of you have been passed over maybe by university or not received government funding that many received. So this platform was created to help you. And many of you have had to deal with being either sick, caring for a loved one who was sick, or knowing many people, and there's this isolation and stress. So you have been heard, and that's this is why this platform was created, to be a place to break from that isolation at least one hour a week, to learn, to focus, to grow with like-minded people, motivated peers, standing shoulder to shoulder virtually to make yourself a better professional and a better individual. It's a social outlet that we're often missing from our lives. And what do we crave more of is connection with people. And this is a network to do that. Here we become better individuals, we become better professionals, and we professionalize the student experience for at least one hour, which I hope leads over into how we study, practice, learn the rest of the day and the rest of the week. So we're here to practice our craft, to prepare more like what Michael Jordan did and why he's one of the greatest basketball players, instead of being like a crazy Dennis Rodman of waking up right before class. To practice creativity, to practice innovation and entrepreneurial skills that we're learning in our classes. So when we are faced with game time in industry, in our next job, we're facing that next promotion, we already know what to expect. So congratulations to each one of you for starting your journey today. Today is the start of that creative journey. And last season, we produced 10 episodes of the Open Educator cast that can be found anywhere where you get your podcasts or on our YouTube TV channel. And last season, for instance, we had more than six alums from USF, many from the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, who are absolutely crushing it. And they're leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for us to follow. We have alumni directly from the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program who are now masters of the universe. Walk down Central in St. Pete and you will see business after business that were created by entrepreneurs from our program and from USF. Walk down downtown Tampa, you will see the same. We will learn the relevant trends. We will talk to people who we can learn from, from people who have already walked and we can follow them in our shoes, in their shoes. We'll talk about what's happening in the world. We'll talk about what's happening here in the St. Pete, Tampa, Tampa Bay, Sarasota. We'll learn about what trends are happening, where we need to be, and how we can grow. We will connect with professionals, alumni, build our network, and understand their secret sauce. We will be a better version of ourselves. 
I'd like to remind you, and maybe you don't know, but the Entrepreneurship and in Innovation Program is unique, very different than any other program at USF. And we focus on three main pillars. Of course, we develop the traditional entrepreneur, the individual who creates a business and starts a business and grows their business. And you may know many alums who have done that. Anyone who loves going to a cafe or a bar, go to Intermezzo. We will have Jared, an alumni from USF Entrepreneurship, who started that as a pop-up. You might like other coffee shops, pizza places, tech. The list goes on, and they've raised millions. So, of course, we develop individuals to create their own business, if you wish. We also, number two pillar, create individuals to be innovators. Innovators who develop products, services, and ideas and create value from ideas within firms. How do you think and who do you think manages developing the next iPhone, Uber, or even Shopify? These are innovators. These are people who have entrepreneurial skills who work for a company. And you want to know what? I have about 10 to 15 students who I've taught who work at Google, who work at Facebook, who work at Apple, and you guys can do the same. So we teach individuals to be innovators and entrepreneurs, even if they're working internally in a company. And lastly, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, we develop individuals and empower people to define careers, you define them yourself, not what other people define for you, like most programs and like most jobs. You are empowered to search out and create your own life, your own career, your own journey, and fulfill those dreams and desires. And we have a series of students who have gone through this who have done that. For instance, one of, I, actually several of my students are influencers on social media. Yes, they were influencers in my class as they were traveling and living in Bali taking our courses and with a massive following on YouTube, a massive following on IG, they're living the high life and they're the, being total gangsters and you could do the same. So define the careers that you want and that's the third pillar of the entrepreneurship and innovation program. And there's many who've done that. So again, the entrepreneurship and innovation program is different than any other program here at USF by those three main ways. Mostly important, we're empowering you to create the life that you want, to be the leaders, the citizens, they create positive change, make the change of, with the world a better place, and you guys are part of it. So what can we expect this season? First, we always have engaging guests. Some will be interview style, some will be master classes. Our very session that we had last year or last semester, was a friend of mine who has, is a top 100 Apple podcaster. And he gave a master class on how to podcast. The time and knowledge that he gave us would save you hundreds of hours. This is the type of caliber of individuals we're bringing. Alumni and many others. We're going to push the boundaries of where learning happens. It doesn't happen in a classroom just in a classroom. It doesn't happen in your hour and a half window that the school says that you have to learn from. We're pushing things outward. So I encourage you to invite your friends. This is open. Bring a buddy. Grow together. Grow your network. And we're going to support each other through this challenging time, but also in our dreams and desires. And we've been doing that. And I want to introduce uh, Sienna, who will be our assistant for the, our sessions, please give a round of applause to Sienna. And we do this in sign language if we have our mics off, which is preferably while we're, we're kicking it off. Uh, Sienna is currently a USF student and an aspiring entrepreneur. She has attended several of these sessions last semester and has taken several of my courses. And would you kindly share your experience of these sessions and how they've helped you as you've attended over the semester? 
Thank you for the introduction and hey everyone. So I've always been someone who believes that you don't need to make a mistake to learn from it. So I've learned so much by attending these sessions and listening to the firsthand experiences of these entrepreneurs and innovators. They tend to explain the do's and the don'ts of what it takes to become successful. So even though a guest speaker may not work in the field that you're interested in pursuing, there's still so much that you can take away from their advice. So my biggest piece of advice to all of you is to Google these guest speakers before the session. You'll see their names coming up on flyers and find out who they are, what they do, and what specifically that you want to learn from them. So having that information, like going into the meeting, will make it um, much more interactive when you guys have the Q&A portion of it. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Sienna. I would like to ask Cassidy. I know she's been a regular and she's taken many courses of mine. And would you be kind enough if you feel comfortable enough to, to share maybe your experience last semester on, on either how these sessions helped you in your coursework or maybe uh, why you continue to come? Yeah, hi. Um, good to see all of you. I think that it's really important to have the like personal connection that these meetings bring because otherwise, you know, there's emails and there's discussions and stuff, but there's different connection that forms when you're talking to someone face to face. So I think that is beneficial in itself, but it's also really inspiring just gathering information from so many different people with different experiences because, you know, um, there are a lot of people that are doing what we want to do, but we just have to like access them. So I appreciate you giving us this resource. Wonderful, thank you for that. Of course. I want to suggest that this course is, or this session is open to not only just the courses that I teach, which currently are three this semester, but anyone who's interested in entrepreneurship and connecting and building a network with other alum, with other local people, and even international. And these are the things, that, the value that we provide through this. So thank you. And I want to suggest we've locked down some several guests so far this season. And of course, we'll be developing more throughout uh, the semester. Uh, alumni who have, have been business owners, coders, to house developers to launch Mr. Automation. Can you imagine them crushing it at a corporate job, deciding to leave during a pandemic and starting their own business? That's the type of the individuals we develop here in the entrepreneurship program. And one of our alumni will be here this semester. Another will be one who parlayed an internship, which many of us might be required to do, into an executive director position at a non-for-profit and is building a reputation in the community. Another is an alumni who has the coolest bar, and cafe in St. Pete and started it through, uh, if you guys are familiar with the concept of prototyping, this was a pop-up that he started and it built momentum and now he has his own cafe and bar. One of the coolest here in St. Pete. Uh, we have a, a trainer on how to expand your digital box. We now live it literally in a box, but we don't have to be just a talking head. We can be much bigger than that. And we'll have a trainer who's uh, ex helps excels in terms of expanding our digital box because how are you going to communicate, persuade, get your next idea off, get your promotion, communicate your ideas to your boss or an investor or whoever you're talking to if we're just a talking head. We have to be bigger than life. We have to be able to use our nonverbal skills just well through multimedia and through video as we would in person. And there's many others to follow. So it's going to be an exciting season. Mark Tuesday, 11 a.m. on your calendar. Bring a friend. Tune in to the best place to be on a Tuesday morning. What I would like to do now before I open it up for questions is kind of say a few words about the three courses that uh, students are, are finding themselves in this semester with me. So maybe if you have. Um, your video on or you're able to maybe make some gesture using an emoji. How many are you? How many of you are from creativity and innovation? You can wave your hand or whatever. I see several hands. Wonderful. How many are from scalability? 
All right. How many from student consulting design thinking? Cool. Wonderful. So we have these three courses and I want to suggest that they all build off of each other. <clears throat> and one thing that makes this session slightly different than others is because you're also engaging with individuals who have walked before you in those classes to know, help you know what to expect, to see what they're going through and how it relates to your course or what you're going through. And then, of course, they are all scaffold from uh, each other. So, for instance, <clears throat> just a few words about creativity and innovation. In this course, you will learn just the basics of what creativity is, what innovation is, why it's important, and to break down some of the myths. These words have become gray. Everyone throws them around with no meaning or me have different definitions. Well, we will put meat and context to what it means to be creative and what it means to be innovative or what innovation is. So therefore, if you have to lead or communicate these concepts, you are able to define them and have others follow and have this same understanding. Because if we say, this is not white, and I think this is blue, you know, we're going to have a very different understanding. And this is why we have that uh, common ground. So you will learn myth busting about creativity and innovation, some basic concepts innovation, and um, learn about famous innovators and entrepreneurs found here in the Tampa Bay area. And you probably will have your mind blown doing that. Um, really impressive and so we are actually standing on the shoulders of giants i won't spoil the the mystery but the, you're you're going to be like wow that happened here in tampa bay uh yeah i can see why tampa bay is an innovating and entrepreneurial and creative place um and you guys are too so that course kind of builds the foundation and there every three or four weeks you have a creative project where you're doing your assessment and you are communicating that learning through creating a creative video answering certain questions. And you will share that in a canvas type discussion where people will be watching what you learn and you're practicing your creative talents through that video. In the scalability class, you are building off of that part that's from creativity and innovation where you're learning about what is innovation. And you go into extensive depth about what scalability is. First, we find that it's deep complete learning, institutional learning, and that's exactly best practices for innovation. And you use very much a, uh, a boot camp approach or a sprint or uh, a challenge approach to learn how small, medium, and large companies innovate. And they're just like there is a finance department, a marketing department, an operations department, an accounting department. Many companies have an innovation or a research and development unit. And there are practices, tools, approaches, frameworks, and ways that companies innovate, especially if you're small or medium sized, you may not have a big budget, but you're still expected to come up with that new product, come up with that new service to grow top line revenue and to compete in your industry. So there are specific tools and ways that companies innovate. Apple innovates very different than Facebook compared to Cisco, compared to Uber. And we're learning about how these companies, small and medium size, innovate, which are also very relevant to anyone who wants to start a business. Because let's be honest, if you're one person, you can't do everything. You have to leverage knowledge. You have to leverage resources. So scalability is really digging down on what innovation is and how it happens and myth busting about innovation and putting more context to this, this word of innovation. And we kind of take a historical approach. And we'll say that's on the organizational or institutional level. In the student consulting and design thinking course, we take a deeper dive in innovation and one method to innovate called design thinking. And maybe you've heard of it. Google uses a method like it. IDEO, the most famous product development company ever. Stanford Design School and Business School use it. Google, the list goes on. And you are taught and trained the design thinking 
methodology and you apply that to a challenge. That's what consultants do. The top four big consultants are now utilizing or purchasing design agencies to apply design thinking within their consulting firm. Design thinking is growing. Would you believe right now Orlando Magic is hiring people who have trained in design thinking? The MBA as well. I have former students who work for Tampa Bay Rays. They're using design thinking to expand their customer. This is important and it's relevant. It's something that you can apply. And this focuses on the group or individual level a bit more. So we can start seeing from the creativity and innovation, we're covering basic topics, which is more of a foundational course, seeing how it relates to disciplines, all major, all job. Creativity is not bound just to the arts. So you have to be creative if you're an entrepreneur. You have to be creative if you are a teacher. You have to be creative even if you're a server or in any industry, right? Then we talk about, we take a deeper dive with scalability and we focus primarily on organizational innovation. And then student consulting, we break off and we have a deeper dive on the group or individual level of consulting and innovation, uh, focusing on design thinking. The skills you learn in creativity and innovation are directly relevant to scalability. And scalability is also directly relevant to student consulting. If you choose to take my courses going forward, they will prepare you and give you an advantage in the, in the industry and when you're applying for jobs. Because we are practicing these skills. We're applying to a project. We're applying them to a challenge that you can submit for money, that you can go out and build and develop and solve a challenging problem that you're passionate about. And this is one way of inno how innovation happens. So that's a bit about the courses and how they relate. And there's many students who have gone through those courses and more with me. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a context of how these courses are structured, why this platform is important, and what you'll get out of it. So again, I can encourage you to continuously engage, learn, bring a friend and come to the best place to be on a Tuesday morning. So I'd like to open the floor to questions uh, that you may have. If it's about class tips, recommendations, how we'll handle these sessions, et cetera. Um, and I'm happy to answer those. So if you have a question, just unmike or unmute and you know share your 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 question. And you guys can ask any questions about the class and upcoming assignments. Like it doesn't have to be specific to this meeting per se. So I have a question. Um, I'm in the creativity and innovation course. So one of the assignments for it is the creativity assessment where we do the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's like the first five slides. That's part one, I think. And then um, I just had a question for the deferred judgment slide. You want us to write out like um, what we disagreed with or agreed with and how we um, like write out the different point of views we looked at it from? Like, I'm just trying to understand what is required for that section. Let me pull that up real quick. Okay. But good question though. Which slide? I think that's slide four. 
Whoops, I just realized I was muted. Yeah, it's slide four. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, for whatever reason, I let it slide five, but whatever. Uh, do you, do you defer, defer judgment? Would you like to take the test? Spend the next 24 hours monitoring your judgment and see things from different points of view. Keep your eyes open for the idea that you don't like or that you, you love and you consciously defer your judgment around it. Okay. All I want you to do is, it's normal as for us uh, as humans, you know, we're, we're emotional. We, we like something, we dislike something. Uh, the idea is just to slow down our thoughts and acknowledge how we're making judgments about them. In fact, I don't know if anyone uh, has read any Buddhist magazines or books. There's a, there's a term, uh, and it, it, it's deeply ingrained in, in that um, theology but in practice, but it, it, I think it applies to to other parts of life, they have a word called equanimity. And equanimity is this idea that things aren't necessarily good or bad. Things aren't hot or cold or right or wrong. And when we're trying to defer judgment, you know, I don't know if, you know, we get that feeling, right? Oh, why did this happen to me? Or I wish this was like this. Or why can we write? This is there are judgments or uh, characteristics or um, uh, we're boxing in. Uh, we're ar we're already taking a stance, a view, and what I'm looking for in the response here is to try to slow down that process. Try to slow down that process, but also just acknowledge that it's happening. The reason is as you go through this assessment and, and you can imagine if you're in a creative group and you're doing some brainstorming, there's so much this subconsciousness and, and un unconsciousness that we're, we're judging. Why did this guy make us come to 11 a.m. meeting? Don't you know that I'm sleeping and I'm still high or drunk, right? You know, there's judgment. Or this is not a required course. So why this is not a required session. So why should I come? What is he gonna offer? Oh, just a, another talking head. We make judgments. And the point is, if we're not aware that we're doing it, and we're we're not slowing that down and and acknowledging it or just you know taking one step to say wow this happens a lot more than i expect knowingly and unknowingly how can we improve how can we get better or how can we change that perception because this non-judgment and non or and deferral will help us later on in brainstorming in evaluation and getting to many other better solutions. So what am I looking for? Talk about your experience trying to do that. Is it easy? Is it hard? Maybe there's these biases, and bias is a word that we should have learned in, in, in management class and other classes. They're conscious and unconscious, right? They could be tied to our values and to our behavior and to our frameworks and stress, whatever. They impact us. So the idea is just to summarize, come up with something that says, here's where I had trouble. Here's where I didn't. I learned this. I didn't learn this. Did I, am I so attached to those? Maybe there's sometimes when you have a piece of chocolate and it's something different from lint chocolate and you're like, oh, I've never had that. Do I like the spicy hot pepper? Do I like the mint? Do I like the sea salt? Right? There's sometimes when you try something and initially you might not like it. But after you digest it and you reflect, then it kind of cha might change your opinion. So what am I looking for? Paragraph, whatever you can fit on that slide, it says you grew by trying to defer judgment because we're trying to get remove those biases. We're trying to break those silos, those mental models 
And so that's the essence of that slide. Does that help? Yeah, I think I understand. So it's basically just like a self-reflection mm -hmm. um, and just summarizing that experience. And then I also wanted to ask if like on a certain slide, if there's not enough room for me to fully express my thoughts, if I could just like add in an extra slide, you know, like to continue. Sounds like a great idea. Okay. Best practices. Wonderful. Love it. Okay. Um, um, it, you know, not that it's an issue, but uh, you can keep writing on the slide, like even if it's off the slide, because it's, th th this is for you. I mean, you could, of course, you can offer, create a new slide. Uh, and you could also type a little comment in the box or something like that as well, if, if you wanted to, because um, it's very important that you guys follow the policies and follow the, the uh, instructions because I have so many students and I will review those and we have a TA who will review these, um, but I don't want to be looking to evaluate your slide 29 and have to go through slides one through 28 for 100 students. You can see how much more time that is. Click, 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 click. That's annoying. That's a judgment. Yeah, absolutely. That's a job. No, that's a deferred judgment. But it takes time. And if you want really good feedback, me hitting the button 28 times for 100 students is not is not a good way for me to good, provide good feedback. So follow the instructions. I, I saw that Ethan had a had a question or his hand raised. I can't see everyone on my screen. Yeah. So if you there, there's another one, uh, Russo has another question. Maybe uh, Sienna, you can um, monitor who might have a question because I can't see everyone. Yeah, no, I'm just kind of going off of what Adriana was asking about the deferring judgment. So I kind of tried that. And I don't know if this really counts, but like I had an idea that I wouldn't usually have like very different from my other ideas and I was a little bit biased against it. But then I kind of found like a new way to use that idea. Would that be the kind of thing that would work for this? Yes. I, I think that's wonderful. You're expected to monitor your thoughts over 24 hours. So then summarize it. And if you write it down, document, then you can summarize it even better. But wonderful. I know you had another question. I think that you did. You send me an email earlier. Me? No, I did not. Okay. I have other questions, but if anybody else has questions, they can go first. Why don't you share yours? Because maybe others have the same question. Okay. Um, so going back to the same PowerPoint we were on for slide um, one of that PowerPoint, I know there was a quote on that slide. Were we supposed to do anything else with that slide or was that just to show us the quote? Uh, just the quote. Okay. And then for the, um, for the video that for the five to six minute video that we have to make, as far as the questions are concerned with that, is there a certain word count for those questions or just, you know, giving a long enough response for each of those in, in depth to fill the time frame? Correct. So I'm going to push everyone. You don't have to be, in fact, I encourage you not to be just a talking head answering those. Because if you just directly, you may not fit five to six minutes. But what I encourage you to do is to create a video that is engaging, that is part of the creative process, that helps helps explain, communicate your answers. Okay. And then also, last question. As far as I know, I load SoundCloud for the podcast. I don't have any room on my phone to download it, but can we just access the link and just look at the playlist through the link that you provided? Yeah, you, you can get that podcast anywhere where you get your podcast music. So it's on Spotify, it's on whatever. So okay. you, you can you can stream it. You don't need to download it. Sweet. Thank you. Who else? Jay Russo, you have your hand up. Is that a question? I think his hand was up from earlier. Oh, okay. So how many are in the uh, scalability class? I know Sienna is, is there anyone else here? 
I can't see it wrong. I think there were a couple of hands at first, but um, I don't see them at the moment. Well, if there's another person in scalability, just say aye. All right, well, this also relates to the student consulting. Scalability and student consulting are structured exactly the same. One of the biggest challenges that students face or don't have the skill, it's called research and identifying the problem. What entrepreneurs, innovators, and creatives do is they solve problems, but they solve very specific and detailed problems. And in scalability and in student consulting, you are to do research and identify a problem. You don't need to solve climate change. You don't need to solve whatever, but a very focused and specific problem. But that problem needs to be substantiated through data and research. Another skill that students aren't good at is research. I know some of you have taken research methodology. Some of you are from many different uh, majors, so you may have very different experiences. But from the business uh, students, we're not trained to do good quality research and to synthesize. Both in the scalability and in the student consulting design thinking class. The whole first half of this is focused on research and defining the problem, because if there's no data to support your problem, or why it's important or why it needs to be solved, then it doesn't matter what solution you come up with. Or if you misidentify the problem, it doesn't matter what solution you come up with because you're solving the wrong problem. So for scalability and student consulting design thinking, the first half is all research. You're not providing a solution because you don't even know the context yet. I give you some broad context but it's through the research, through the narrowing, through the primary, through the secondary research, interviews, surveys, you're able to get to a nugget and a problem that is meaningful, specific, and you can act on. Through this, you're going to be making lots of presentations virtually. You'll be provided feedback both from me and from other students because feedback is important and giving feed, learning to give critical feedback is important. But we're also, as business students, and I don't know about all students, but are also not good at presenting. Soft skills are the new gangster. It doesn't matter how great you are technically if you can't communicate your ideas. And we will continuously be able to, and be forced to communicate virtually both in our semester, but in the world, the world has changed, as you know, and it'll be more and more primarily through video and through different technology. So creating and communicating ideas, research in some sort of logical method, in a logical story, big to small, whatever. So you're expected to do that, and you will have to make, I think, sometimes four or five presentations for each class. We're trying to get better professionally both in the soft skills and the technical, and logical, and hard skills that you build through research and through the work that you're doing. You'll be applying different content. So, of course, in scalability, you're learning about certain content. You apply that to solve the challenge. In student consulting, you're learning design thinking. You apply that to a challenge. Uh, but they're structured the same. You know, research, presentation, research, presentation, research, presentation. And then the second half of the semester, you are building a solution to that problem that you've identified. So hopefully that gives a little bit of context. So if you choose for those in the creativity innovation class now, if you take the scalability class, and then you go on to the student consulting, those are the same structure and you have an advantage because you already know what the expectation. And I'm not going to lie, I don't know what your other faculty and professors expect. Maybe they give you tests, which, in my opinion, do not help you in the real world. Here, we don't have tests, at least not the traditional type of tests. We are practicing our craft. We are swinging that golf club like 
Tiger Woods did, or like Serena Williams with her backhand and forehand. What I don't know which one's the backhand, which one's the forehand, but they practiced it millions of times, and that's what we're practicing in our day-to-day work with this class in our weekly sessions and in, in, in the great work that we do. So we're going to stick on a tight t- time frame, one hour, 11 o'clock. I was proud, and I'm proud of you guys for showing up today, for you know, getting your game and shoes on and getting ready for next week because we have a great speaker. And I mentioned a bit about it. Imagine crushing it at work, working for a, a, a well-respected company here as in, the, in their innovation department. Quits his job to start. Mr. Automation, what does that say about his empowerment, about his confidence and his ability to to create a career and a journey that he defines? So we'll hear from Chris next week. Before we sign off, I would like to open the floor for other questions. If you do, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and and share your question. Okay, so I had a question. I had a couple questions. So um, when it comes to the textbook for student consulting, you recommend us getting it? Absolutely. I have it. Right? I think this is one. So it's not really a textbook. It's uh, like a workbook. I think the other one is the, the one before this. So this is Design Thinking Toolbox. I think the other one is Design Thinking Toolkit, but the same company, same, same people. And right. what's unique about Design Thinking it, there's four phases that you'll teach, you'll learn, uh, and this has different tools within each phase. Hundreds of tools. But the reality is I can't cover and, and show you all 100 tools, uh, so we will cover two or three per, per, per phase. But this goes above and beyond to explain. This talks about different tools that could be used at different times. It provides more background on the social science research that's embedded and what human-centered design is in design thinking, a lot more than we can just pack in. I mean, I use this course or a a version of it to teach and train MBAs, executives, people at Tico, Boar's Head, C1 Bank, Bank of the Ozarks. This is very valuable. So it's something that you could always refer back to it adds a lot more context, and I encourage you. I think the book used probably could be 15 bucks or something like this. So um, it's not expensive, but I encourage you to purchase it because it provides a whole next level of, of understanding and expands all the tools because I can't cover 100 tools. I can only cover a few. And the idea for our classes is just to be comfortable, to be knowledgeable, and apply some things to those but to be an expert, that's the practice. That's the deep knowledge that you continue to develop over time. Definitely. Okay, awesome. Um, and then, yeah, so right now we're just researching and then our toolkit one will be due. So that's going to be due before our next meeting. So I just wanted to make sure that I was kind of heading on the right direction with that, that we're basically all we're doing is gathering the research of the issue. Good. So Cassidy is in the student consulting design thinking. Um, We have. um, So I introduce what design thinking is. And the methodology and how the methodology that I use, which I've created called management design thinking, and you'll go into why it's different than what Facebook uses, whatever, very similar, but there's specific reasons why I've created it and why it differentiates compared to what IT uses, and that's the most important part because we're social beings, we're leaders, we're managers, we work with people, and if we ignore that, there are consequences for us. But, um, so my recommendation for you is to kind of understand what design thinking is, start reading some of the, uh, know and master the challenge. Um, And in design thinking methodology, or design thinking course, we were learning about there is a major trends and transformation that, and I'm sure most of you guys can relate to this in higher ed. Uh, this idea of non-traditional students, find out what a non-traditional student is, right? I'll tell you what the answer is right now. The, non- the non-traditional is anyone who 
isn't the person who went straight from high school to college and who doesn't have to work. Well, that's not most of us, right? Most of us are working at least part time. Many of us may have taken a time off. Many, many of us may have gone to SPC or other places. Many of us may be coming back to school. So the non-traditional student has very different needs than the traditional student. On top of that, we have this whole new world of online learning and education. So that also has also uh, accelerated certain things. So you are learning the context of the challenge, identifying these important parts, um, and you are to get your feet wet with research and doing primary and secondary research in the beginning to just help build an understanding. Um, very similar to what the people in scalability have to do is understand what the Internet of Things is. What is it? How do you define it? How is it used? Cases. Plus, you're expected to master the material, the content. Which later on, you will, the light bulb will go on. Those, all of those pieces of content are directly relevant to uh, Internet of Things and smart cities. I would also encourage you uh, for scalability to really master that document, right? You say, oh, it's not specific. It's not supposed to be specific. Innovation problems that we're trying to fi fix and solve. Oh, don't just fall from the sky. Solve this. We have to refine and define the problem very narrow. So I, I get broad context, and you guys get to choose the passion problem. If it's sustainability, if it's plastic, if it's uh, trash, 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 if it's transportation, pollution, whatever. You guys have to define it, but you guys have to do the research to support that. Um, and you guys are also expected to meet with the research librarian, Gary. So I encourage you to work in advance project plan. Project planning, project, ma project management is very important, regardless of what industry or job you're in. And here's your time to start practicing it. And this is going to help you meet the goals, meet the objectives, meet the expectations of class. So you reduce your stress, set a time and project plan. So that's the first assignment, particularly in scalability. Yes. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Perfect. Shoot. I guess I'll go. I guess sorry, I have another question. So as far as our um, project B presentation video goes, I know it's set on there for APA format. So obviously going to have a slide with like all the citations in APA, but I know you want to verbally cite as well, even though we're not just regurgitating the book. So you want to be like, oh, according to our textbook, you know, creativity rising, this and this, and then continue forward just like that. That sounds great. Perfect. OK. I mean, you, you don't need to do it to everyone in, inside text citation. Well, you, you certainly have to have the reason why I'm encouraging you to reference the most important things in your presentation or your video is because that builds credibility. Yeah. Right? People, oh, oh, IBM did that. Oh, oh, World Economic Forum did that. That that adds, builds credibility. People are persuaded by that. But if you say Joe Schmo down the block, the homeless guy told me that, like, is that going to sell your idea and your product? You get the point. Who else has a question? We've got a few more minutes. Now is your good time. Oh. Um, so throughout your experience, like teaching these courses, what have you noticed um, students who are successful do? Like, in other words, like how do you succeed in your courses? Wonderful. Great question. Is it, is it Alex? Austin. 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 Great question. Uh, I would suggest the things that students do to be successful in these classes is to work ahead. Is to um, really engage with the material. There's a lot of opportunity to have fun with it. There's a lot of opportunity to learn from others, to be inspired by others, to pull in other resources, um, to practice what we're what you're trying to learn. So those who are successful are ones who take this as a job, right? We can, there's a, let me ask you, Austin, does, does LeBron James show up 
to the court with one shoe and say, I'm ready to play? <laughs> Probably not, no. <laughs> right. what, what does he do? He's there one hour, two hours, three hours before. He's practicing his shot, his free throw, his three-pointer, right? What do they do in the NFL? They're there many hours stretching, practicing, right? Mm -hmm. That is exactly – this is – being a student is not something that suffer in our society somehow, or at least the USF, I see it as – Oh, it's school. We can spend 10 minutes a, a week doing our homework and get an A. That's not this class. So you want to you want to know, or these classes, you want to know how to be successful? Each class is going to take 10 to 12 hours per week to be a baller. The question is, yeah, you can get an A. You probably could pass the class, you know, being a shithead. But do you want to be a baller or and you want to be a gangster? Do you want to be a professional? Or do you just want to be that person who's who's doing the minimum? Because I can guarantee what happens in real life, the person who puts the minimum in is not the person who gets the raise, who gets that job that they want, who creates the life they want. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. So the person who's professional, who shows up, turns their camera on, says, I'm here to learn at least for one hour a week. Because I'm going to give you lots of other tips. Of course, we, we have Q&A after when we have our guests. The ones who are building that network, who's applying what we're we're suggesting, um, dedicating that time, and you know, taking this as a job, being the professional student, professionalizing the student experience to say, hey, yeah, I'm going to have to wake up when I get my job after I graduate, and I'm going to have to be there at 8 a.m. sharp. Well, why should I wait doing that and not practice that now? Be comfortable on video. Push your boundaries. Don't do the minimum. Encourage others. Go above and beyond. These are the skills and the expectations of why someone would succeed and go and, and, and be blown away and inspire others. Do work that you're proud of. How about that? How many yeah. times have you guys turned in work that you're not proud of? A lot. <laughs> okay. Well, be a better version of yourself in these classes, whatever that is, you know, everyone's got different talents. Use those talents. So those in the creativity and innovation, if you're a musician, write a song. Do the response writing a song. Anyone to know it? There's many who have. If you were in woodworking and you know how to build furniture, do a time lapse of you building that furniture. That has happened in our class. If you're a dancer, dance. In fact, we have a, a jingle. One of our former students have created a jingle for the creativity and innovation class. Maybe we'll share that soon. If you're opera, if you are theater, if you are designer, if you are biology, whatever skills you have from your other class, show. Don't just tell. Be the video or the project that everyone says, wow, he or she is talented. I want to be more like that person. I can do that. Let's see if I can do something better. Push your boundaries and be a better version of yourself. So I would suggest those would be some tips and advice. Don't be that person that's overlooked or doesn't put the effort in. Sweet. Yeah, those are great. I wrote a lot of it down, so Good. thank, <laughs> thank you. you. What other questions are out there? Next time, if we can have the chat on option so that we can kind of communicate throughout the course. I don't know if that's an option, but. Thank you. I, I'm trying to figure out how to how to do that, but I think that's a good good idea. Yeah, so it wasn't on for you guys? Uh, I was not able to access it. It says chat in channel meetings is only available to team members. Mm. I think okay. most of us were logged in as guests and that's probably what happened. I don't know why we were logged in as guests, but I think that's what happened. Okay, yeah, I'll so look at I know I know why we'll discuss if, if there's a workaround. Um because you guys have been invited to the meeting and not the 
Teams channel, um, and there's some reasons why I've done that, but I didn't realize that would inhibit the chat, but we'll see what we can do or. Um, I mean, we're using Teams right now. Most of the rest of the professional world use Zoom, but we are being told uh, we need to use Teams, so we'll continue to work through these things, but I, I agree. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm sorry, I had a last minute question real fast. Yes, please. I'm in the innovation class and I already submitted my video. Mm -hmm. Um, Was there, you sent me a message saying like re-upload it. Do you know if I uploaded it right the second time or not? Okay, wonderful. So uh, just to clarify, you're in the creativity and innovation class because all my courses deal with innovation particularly. Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and congratulations to you for being a leader. Um, it's Kendall, right? Yes. Wonder. Uh, I've never seen this in all my years of teaching, and this is the type of this answers Austin's question. Uh, Kendall turned in the first assignment on the first day of school. Oh, wow. you know, everyone's got different context. Everyone's got different reasoning behind it. But this is what a leader is. This is, and and she's done it very well. So all what I want to say is, um, it the the reason why uh, I wrote the comment to you is. If you just paste the the YouTube link or however you, you, you upload it and you don't hit a space bar, then the the uh, video doesn't appear in uh, Canvas. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, and that what the reason why I think that's important is because the second part of that Project B video assignment is people want to provide a critique or feedback or learn from what you did. and students who don't have their video showing are less likely to get feedback. Okay. Plus, it's a, it's always an extra step for me to evaluate because I have to copy it and then paste it in another browser. OK, I'll double so you check. Don't need, you, you don't need to up, update it. You just need to make sure that the uh, video appears in Canvas. You know what I'm saying? Like, a, yeah, a I'll pre double preview, check. preview mode. Wonderful. Good question, and thank you for being a leader. Wonderful. So we've reached the 12 o'clock or 12.01. Uh, again, we're going to keep a strict one hour. I know everyone's busy. He's got every you know, many things to do. But I'm very proud of each one of you for joining us today uh, and the best place to be on a Tuesday morning. I hope you found this useful so far. Next week, we kick it off uh, with our guest, Chris Packett. And I'm happy that you guys have joined to be a better version of yourself regardless of the course that you're in. So again, look forward to seeing you next week. Tell your colleagues, tell your friends, and please join us. See you next Tuesday. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.